proof of what? Did you know that besides proof of work and proof of stake, there are a dozen of other consensus mechanisms out there. Some of them just minor tweaks from the ones we know so well, other ones highly experimental, and the crypto coins using them are trying to see if they can eventually replace the ones that we know so well. So in this video, I'm going to provide a high level overview of a bunch of different consensus mechanisms to give you an idea of what all is out there and how they work generally speaking. So if you're curious about this, then just sit tight and keep on watching. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm from Bitcoin for Beginners and welcome back to my Kevin Talks Crypto series where I pick interesting topics in the crypto space, do deep research and share with you my findings. I'm really doing a lot of this series lately because I think that there's not a better time than this bear market to learn, 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 get our fundamentals up so we can be ready for the next bull run. So if you could support me real quick by smashing that like button and subscribing down below if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay, so now let's get started. So what are consensus mechanisms used for? Well, they're used so that blockchain networks, which are a network of peers, can come to agreement about the state of the network. This means it helps you answer the following questions. Is the blockchain valid? Which block should we add next? Who has the right to add a block and when? This is particularly important because in a blockchain network, you have a network of peers who you don't necessarily know and you don't necessarily trust. So you need a kind of mathematical way to set up the system so that you can all come to agreement and work together, even when some people may not be operating fairly. There are a bunch of different implementations for consensus mechanisms, and they all vary in terms of decentralization, security, incentives, and other measures. So there's a lot of consensus mechanisms. As you can see in this brief list below, I just included some of the more better known ones. You got proof of work, stake, importance, authority, capacity, not going to read them all out, but I'll cover most of these and just give you a high level overview so you can understand what each one is all about. First one is the granddaddy of them all, the proof of work. And this is the first consensus algorithm. The idea is that computers are racing to solve a puzzle or to come up with a hash that works. And it's a very straightforward process, but repetitive. So you have to just guess more and more and more until someone in the network gets it right. And then they have the right to add the next block. By the nature of this, it is very hard to solve, but very easy to check. This makes it very expensive to attack the network, right? Because you need 51% or more of the whole network's hash rate to be able to consistently put your own blocks down the chain and potentially do so maliciously. So it's really not economically viable for miners to do so. It's much more incentivize for them just to play by the rules and try to mine for a blocks and get the block rewards and transaction fees as such. Some popular coins that implement this kind of consensus mechanism include Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and other ones that are kind of around the Bitcoin protocol family. Now what about the second most famous one, proof of stake? Now this one is where you stake coins in which you kind of lock it up in order to get a chance to be the one to add the next block to the chain. It's a much more energy efficient approach because you don't need all those computers, servers, electricity, etc. And the right to add a block is a lottery, but your chances are proportional to the amount of coins that you stake. Most coins that implement this type of protocol have a static coin supply because you really don't need inflation in order to incentivize miners to invest in resources and pay for those resources to solve problems to add blocks. You do get transaction fees though. Similarly to proof of work, you need a majority of the entire coins supply in order to attack the network. A big problem with proof of stake protocols is the nothing at stake problem. The idea is that because there's nothing like tangible, like electricity or resources, that you're using, only coins that you're locking up, you can potentially vote for multiple different forks if they're floating around the network. So that consensus will never be reached because in proof of work, you're not incentivized to do so. So eventually if there's multiple forks floating around, it collapses to one chain that everyone agrees on. Now there are some solutions to this problem, pretty complicated, but once again, I'll let you do your own research on that. Some big name projects that utilize proof of stake include the Nextcoin, Ethereum Casper, Peercoin, Cardano, etc. Next one's pretty similar to proof of stake. It's called Delegate proof of stake. The idea is that stakeholders like you and I can elect leaders who will vote for us and potentially pass us some of the rewards as well. These leaders can be voted in or out at different times and they produce blocks in a round robin fashion so that they don't get to put them all in a row. This process is much more collaborative than competitive and so it's more centralized and it can operate much faster than traditional approaches. One big problem though is that whales have a lot of power in this approach so they can vote themselves in or vote their friends in. We've seen this as a problem in several of the projects 
projects that implement this approach. Some famous projects that implement this are EOS, BitShare, Steam, Lisk, and Arc. As you can see, Dan Larimer projects, he loves to use this approach. Proof of authority is another interesting one. And the idea here is that validators or nodes are approved or public identities, and they must be publicly verified and they must operate what you call an authority node. There's also non-consecutive block approval. And the incentive is to not play foul because your identity is known. So your reputation may get ruined if you like mess with the network. This can be used in both public and private networks. But a big question is that since it's centralized to the authority nodes, why not just use a traditional database? Some famous projects that implement this approach are POA network, VeChain Thor, and another similar type of protocol to this name is called proof of reputation. Next up, proof of capacity or proof of space. Basically, the idea here is that you're going to take proof of work, but instead of computation power, you're going to have to allocate storage or memory in terms of getting the ability to add the next block. This is definitely a good way to use for anti-spam or denial service attacks prevention. And it's definitely a greener approach than the more resource intensive proof of work. So the idea is that you have to allocate a certain amount of memory or disk space in order to solve a challenge. And if you're the prover or the person who wants to add a block, you send the verifier a piece of data that proves that you've allocated such space. And it's hard to pass verification if you haven't actually allocated the space. And one implementation of how to do this is to have people label hard to pebble graphs. Once again, pretty technical, but I'll let you look into that further yourself. Incentives may be a problem in these protocols, and also projects that have utilized this approach include Burstcoin, Chia, and Spacement. Now, proof of weight is kind of an umbrella or a broader family of consensus protocols that instead of the amount of stake in like proof of stake, you weight some sort of other measure. Some versions of this include proof of space or proof of reputation, two that we just went through. Projects that utilize this approach include Algorand, Filecoin, Chia and similar ones. For example, Filecoin, instead of weighting the amount of coins that you lock up, they weight the amount of IPFS data that you have stored in order to let you see how likely you are to be able to add the next block or verify blocks. Proof of importance. This is kind of just an expanded version of proof of stake. And basically it says that not only the amount of coins you hold should be considered, there's a variety of other metrics that should be taken into consideration. For example, in terms of an importance calculation, you can take into account notoriety, the balance, velocity of transactions, and more. This is a way to punish block producers to kind of just hold a lot of coins and sit back and stake them and not really contribute to the activity of the ecosystem, which some people really value. In many of these implementations, they do require a minimum balance in order to participate. NEM is a big name project that utilizes this approach. This is also kind of similar to proof of believability, which is IOST's consensus mechanism. Proof of burn is another very interesting one. Basically, the idea is that you have to send coins to a burn address, which is irretrievable after you do so in order to get the chance to mine. And you can either burn the project's native currency or other coins like Bitcoin, which is not cool in my opinion because we're already running out of Bitcoin. It's deflationary and a lot are lost already. So the chance that you get selected to mine increases with the amount of coins you burn. And if you think about it, your stake decreases over time. So you have to continue to burn more and more in order to maintain the same odds of getting selected. If you think about it, this is kind of similar to proof of work because if you just sit still and have the same equipment, the amount or chances that you'll get get rewards of Bitcoin, for example, will decrease over time. So you have to continue to invest more money into equipment and new equipment as well in order to stay competitive. Some criticisms is that this is still wasteful of resources and that you're just straight up incentivizing people to burn money, which is kind of wasteful. Some projects that implement this approach are Slimcoin and TG Coin. Haven't really heard of those, but you should go take a look. Next up, proof of activity. This is kind of a hybrid proof of work and proof of stake example, and it's mainly implemented to combat the tragedy of commons concern, where in the future, when block rewards drop to zero, which it will happen one day for Bitcoin. The problem that people foresee is that when there's no block rewards, miners will be desperate to accept any transaction fees, no matter how low. And then us, the people sending it, will have lower and lower transaction fees. And then thus, eventually miners won't want to mine anymore. And then thus, the network will be open to 51% attack. So proof of activity aims to solve this by starting out with POW, allowing them to mine an empty template without any transactions. Then it switches to proof of stake, where validators select a block to sign and and rewards get split between both proof of work miner and the staker. Now the criticism is kind of the same for both proof of work and proof of stake in that it still has energy usage and also there's no deterrence of double signing in terms of like the nothing at stake problem. A very notable project that implements proof of activity is Decred. Next up a pretty famous algorithm is called the practical Byzantine fault tolerance and this is used by Hyperledger and Zillica. The idea is that nodes receive a message for example a transaction or a block that you want to add and it combines that with the internal state or information that they know already to make a decision on whether the message is valid or should be accepted. They then share that decision with the other nodes
nodes and then consensus in the whole network is based on the totality of decisions of nodes so if some of them agree but some of them don't they need to reach a certain threshold to get network-wide consensus this approach gives you super fast speeds high throughput and transaction finality which means that once a transaction is accepted and passes the threshold it is final it's not probabilistic like bitcoin remember in bitcoin you might have to wait a few blocks because it can always become rejected if a longer chain appears without your accepted transaction inside of it however this approach is better for smaller amount of nodes and also there's more trust required for each node they're likely not anonymous at all another very similar one is called federated byzantine agreement done by ripple and its fork stellar this works with a larger amount of participants compared to the previous one we just talked about and less trust is placed on any specific validator the idea is that each participant trusts a subset of nodes their own internal group reaches consensus and since a whole network is formed by many of these groups and they likely have overlap you can kind of use an algorithm to calculate the overlaps and make sure the whole network reaches a good threshold of consensus next up is delegated byzantine fault tolerance this is where ordinary nodes like you and i can elect bookkeeper nodes and those must have special equipment dedicated internet connections and a certain minimum number of coins staked the bookkeepers are randomly chosen to add blocks to the chain and 66 percent or more must agree for it to get accepted this is super fast and scalable but the bookkeeper identities are known so if governments try to censor them then that would be a problem a famous project that implements this approach is neo and finally directed acyclic graphs not super similar to these other blockchain related consensus mechanisms but they do have their own consensus mechanisms these are highly scalable efficient and fast and the different approach to blockchain because they work to add blocks or transactions in parallel instead of one by one as in a blockchain on a high level each new block confirms some previous transactions so everyone is working together to maintain the ledger now these implementations vary in terms of tip selection or in terms of which other older transactions your new block will confirm the ordering of transactions and how finality is determined some very famous projects that implement this approach is the iota with their tangle nano byteball and hashgraph so here are some resources i have to give a shout out to for researching reading and dissecting to create this video i hope you enjoyed this and learned a lot as you can see there are many many different consensus mechanisms they are going to have to improve in order for blockchain and crypto to eventually succeed a lot of them are just tweaks of very popular ones but some of them are brand new so i'm just sitting tight and waiting to see what happens in the space on the tech side of things this is kevin i hope you can give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already i hope you have an amazing rest of your day and i'll catch you guys next time